The following program is presented by HAudio.com. The Kabbalah of Love. It says in Kabbalah, before you're born, you're one soul. That's what you, you're half a soul, you go off into this world. And your other half, which is called your Zivug, or your ultimate soulmate, also goes off into this world. And the idea is that you go through life and you make choices. Life is choice. Should I, up? Should I get up? Should I sleep in? Should I wear this, eat this, be with this person, say this? Life is choice. Hopefully you make the right choices. You become a whole half, and you merit to meet that other half. Again, that ultimate soulmate is called your Zivug. Does everybody marry their Zivug? No, they don't. Some people, and not just the people get divorced, some people marry what's called your Besheret. You know the term Besheret? Besheret means it's meant to be. It's Besheret you're here, it's Besheret you're sitting beside the person. My whole life today was totally Besheret and all the things that happened. What's the difference between your Zivug and Besheret? How do you know who you marry? So it's not a negative thing to marry a Besheret, because the idea in life is that the person you marry is going to help you realize your potential. Right? For the woman, you'll realize your potential through him, and he will realize his potential through you. If there's one reason, or many reasons, that you make choices, that for whatever reason, meeting that zivug, that soulmate, will not help you to realize your potential, then God brings you your Bishirat. It says there's a Bishirat for every level that you're at. If you imagine, who's married here? Married people? Some married? Okay, good. If you think about the person you're married to, think about the person five years before you met this person, the person you thought you were going to marry, perhaps. You probably can't even compare the two people. Because again, you merit, it's depending on the choices that you make, for every level that you're at, and again, you're trying to reach the ultimate as a half, and you merit to meet that other half. If I had a visual aid here, and I could show you your soul as a circle, when God splits you, he doesn't split you down the middle. He splits you like this. Like two pieces of a puzzle that fit together. You have certain qualities that he doesn't have, and he has certain qualities that you don't have, speaking woman perspective. That's good. That's good. Those qualities that you don't have, that you are tremendously drawn to on a deep soul level, those qualities you need in order to realize your potential. You know this often, that opposites attract. Is anybody here um, an extroverted woman married to an introverted man? Yes? Extroverted woman married to... Yeah. All right. Before... Uh, I, I'm an extroverted woman married to an introverted man. Before you walk into a social event with your husband, what does he say to you? How many people are going to be there? Ah, okay. My husband says, my husband, very similar, my husband says, when are we leaving? I go, we didn't even get in yet. We don't even know if we're having fun. What do you mean, when are we leaving? Why? Because for an extrovert, the more you're with people, right, the more oxygen, it's like getting oxygen into your system, right? The more, the more energy you get. For an introvert, it's like somebody sucking the air out of a balloon. Okay, you deflate it, right? Being in a social situation. So extroverts tend to be attracted to introverts. And people who are complicated tend to marry people who are not as complicated. You really see that in life, this opposites attract. Why? Because again, those two pieces of a puzzle that are fitting together. Those qualities that you're tremendously attracted to in order to complete yourself, to be that one soul again, before you're married, all right, you see that you have that attraction. So just be careful because after you're married, those are the same qualities that make you nuts. All right? <laughs> that you completely resent. I'm like, well, come, why can't you be with you? So, so you have to realize you need those qualities that will help you to realize your potential. So what's the difference between the Zivug and the Bishara? Difficult to, uh, there are two indicators that perhaps you're in a Zivug situation, all right? 
So, and again, I don't believe that my husband's my Zuko, and I'll explain why, based on these things. Uh, I believe he's my Bishu. So, do you ever go to a wedding, and the bride and groom look alike? Like, sometimes they look remarkably alike. They look like brother and sister. They look more like the brother and sister than the brother and sister look like, all right? <laughs> so that is an indication that perhaps this is a Zivugi thing going on here. If I have a whole bunch of married couples in front of me, I can usually pick out ding, 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 like who, and people come up to me afterwards. People are always telling us we look so much alike. You have that situation? Or you know the situation, all right? Happen. So that's one indicator, because if you want spiritually one, then perhaps there's a physical resemblance as well. You hear? The second indicator of a Zivuk marriage or a Zivuk situation is that a, that a Zivuk marriage is an easier flowing marriage. Sometimes easy, smeezy, he starts the sentences, she finishes one kind of marriage. So my marriage is, first of all, my husband and I don't look anything alike at all. And I don't have one of those easy, smeezy marriages. Right? I have one of those marriages that takes a lot of work. But through that work, that effort is good for us. All right? Why is that funny? All right. <laughs> it's not always so funny. All right. So, but that work is good for us. Through the effort, again, the whole idea in marriage is going to realize your potential through this union. Through that effort, that's how we grow. And the Almighty knows what you need and what they need in order to grow. All right. So, um, 